He always cut the image of a man in control, a man exercising political power to the fullest. Feared he was, and with an iron fist he controlled the country's political scene. Moy was a master survivor. How he ascended to power, marking the first step. Mimi. Daniel Droidic Arab Moy, na ba kwa mbani takuwa maminifu kwa jamuhuri ya Kenya, na kuitumikia kwa moyo wangu wote. In his 24-year journey of survival, as the late Mzee Jomo Kenyatta's second in command, Moy was deemed an unlikely successor, a contingent of influential political leaders around the late founding father, even labeled him a passing cloud. From the time he was vice president, he knew there was this clamor that Moy should never be the president. He knew the leaders. Kina Kihika Kimani, Kina Jaroge Mungai, Angaine Jackson, did I mention Jenga Karume, Kina Paul Ongei, and other supporters. So, Mr. Moy, because of the treatment he got when he was vice president, he became handed. He had a heart of Teflon material, so nothing is stuck. Barely four years in power, there was a military attempt to dethrone Moy. Though the attempted coup was quickly neutralized, the incident completely changed Moy's personality. He turned ruthless and tough, trusted very few people, and from then on, led with an iron fist. And what is the cardinal instinct of any living thing, of any human being? The cardinal instinct is self-preservation, other things later. Yeah. You cannot be a good man if you are dead. Yeah. You have to be alive first. So, his toughness also emanated from that. You cannot spit on him and get free and get away with it. The Sunday Times in an article affirmed Moy's self-definition as a professor of politics, and I quote, Moy may not have studied politics at anyone's university, but he has proved himself a real professor of politics in the practical sense, end of quote. The late opposition chief Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, in his autobiography Not Yet Uhuru, likened Moy to a giraffe with a long neck that saw from afar legal scholar Professor Makao Mutua, in an article published by the Saturday Nation on 30th March 2013, termed Moy a political genius who, and I quote, outsmarted and outfoxed everybody. Yes, Accept it. Mr. Moy had no political equal. The question is why the man from Baringo isn't possessed of enormous raw natural intelligence, but his political instincts are truly unparalleled. End of quote. What is required is practical politics, not, not theoretical politics. Understand language of Manaiji, language of grassroots. Having cracked down on dissent in 1982, Moy went on to win the 1983 snap elections and retained the seat in the controversy ridden 1988 Mlolongo polls. But in 1990, the former president's nightmare began. The clamor for multi-party dispensation kicked in, spearheaded by Kenneth Matiba, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Charles Rubia, Martin Shikuku, among others. The murder of the then Foreign Affairs Cabinet Minister Dr. Robert Ouko aggravated the situation for Moi. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs>
His political acumen was increasingly on trial. In 1991, Moy seemed to be at his weakest, with the opposition brigade piling pressure, and he yielded to pressure and agreed to repeal Section 2A of the Constitution, ending Kanu's days as the sole political party and paved the way for multi party politics. Kimani Ngonjiri, who currently represents Bahati constituency in the National Assembly and was a long-serving Kanu chairman in Nakuru, tells of the intrigues before the groundbreaking decision was arrived at during the party's national delegates conference at the Kasarani Gymnasium. So he, he was telling us, no section 2A. No section 2A. All the chairman and everybody, we went delegated knowing there is no section 2A. But the man is very clever. After we are given a chance to talk with the chairman, no section 2A, ba, 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 ba. no section 2A, two, ba, 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 ba. everybody will talk. What you will do, the final? After listening to the mood and to the people and the country, to secure this country, we have to give section 2A. And we who are rejecting, and we are there, we all clap now and start saying now. <laughs> you see, that's how he was mad. He must come out himself with the solution. As a president, those are the controls he had. Moi kept a firm grip on Kanu affairs. At the NDC, he blasted some unnamed party honchos for double dealing. A year later, Kenya went for its first general election following the reintroduction of multi party politics. Moi, in a cunning way, triggered divisions in the opposition team, Forum for Reforms and Democracy, Ford. Kenneth Matiba vied on a Ford a silly ticket. Moi Kibaki flew the flag of the Democratic Party of Kenya, DP, while Jaramogi Oginga Odinga ran on a Ford Kenya ticket. Moi garnered 1.9 million votes, with the opposition candidates garnering a combined 3 million votes in an election marred by allegations of ballot stuffing and ethnic violence. <laughs> Two years later, the clamor for a new constitution that had begun simmering in the 80s returned with a vengeance. The opposition bigwigs backed by civil society players and university scholars kept Moe on his toes. Yeah. In Parliament, the opposition benches were giving Moi restless nights. The constitutional reform slogan grew louder each day, amplified by the diplomatic missions in Kenya. <laughs> The heightened clamor for a new constitution soon birthed a vibrant civil society grouping that came to be known as the National Convention Executive Council, led by a soft-spoken scholar, Professor Kivuda Kibwana, who would later become the first governor of Makweni County. NCC rallied the country against Moi's single-party rule. They organized conventions to discuss a new constitution and produced a model constitution dubbed the Kenya We Want and translated it into various Kenyan languages. 
But when opposition politicians began teaming up with NCEC in the now deafening noise over a new constitution, Moy sensed danger. In a surprise maneuver that would split the political opposition and diffuse tensions in the country, Moy engineered an unlikely political process that came to be known as the Inter-Parties Parliamentary Group Initiative, IPPG. A majority of the political bigwigs that had teamed up with the civil society quickly jumped onto the new initiative and abandoned the quest for a new constitution ahead of the 1997 general election. Nonetheless, IPPG opened up the political space somewhat. Opposition political parties got a concession to nominate their representatives to the Electoral Commission. Political rallies would no longer require licenses and the state broadcaster was now required to give equal airtime to political parties during campaigns. Some of the agreements were never implemented to the letter, but the professor of politics had once again outfoxed his opponents and went on to win the 1997 election, polling 2.5 million votes against Kibaki. 1.9 million and Raila Odinga's 667,000 votes. And with that victory, notwithstanding claims of rigging and other electoral malpractices, Moy began his exit from the political scene, but not before a series of memorable and significant political milestones, among them Kanu's short lived merger with Raila Odinga's National Democratic Party, NDP. Kama Kanu na NDP na Ungala, Kanu na kwa na ngubu. Bini bini ujijogu, 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 With the renewed strength, Moy even took charge of the Constitution Review for a moment, working with his new found Secretary General Raila Odinga to put in place a parliamentary select committee to kickstart the process. The Odinga committee would name renowned scholar Professor Yash Palgai to head a Constitution Review Commission. The type of constitution Kenya needs is a constitution that will protect them. Moy sent the clearest signal yet that he was exiting the political stage, shifting focus to who would be his successor in the Jogo party. <laughs> kwa raia mwema lakini wale wanaosingatia kuongoza msiweke Kenya chini msiweke msingi wa siasa zenu kwa chuki kama yuko mtu ametukana mimi na msamee Na kama yuko mtu ambaye nimesema chicho tamba kumemisa roo yake, unisame. Moi sidestepped senior Kanu leaders and opted for a political greenhorn Uhuru Kenyatta as his successor and Kanu's flag bearer in the 2002 presidential race. That decision marked the turning point in Kanu's 50-year reign. Uyu makamu wa raisi ni rafiki, lakini urafiki, sikieni, urafiki ni tofauti <laughs> the interest of 30 million people overrides other interests na kwa hivyo mtu asifikiri kwamba oh kwa sababu mimi nakwenda namna hii nakwambana na makamu wangu wa rais hapana 
hiyo ni siasa ya pesa nani kama wale wanakimbia hivi hivi feeling slighted Raila Odinga led a massive walkout from Kanu carrying with him long-term Moi loyalists including the then vice president professor George Saitoti to join forces with Kibaki Michael Kijana wa Malwa and Charity Ngilu among other luminaries to form the National Rainbow Coalition NAC the coalition's candidate Kibaki whitewashed Kenyatta in the presidential contest Finally the curtains came down on Moi's 24 years, 4 months and 8 days in power. Once he handed over to Kibaki at Uhuru Park, Moi began his journey to Kabarak, signifying a smooth transfer of power. I thank you for following me all right to my home. <laughs> Happy we are not happy. And the professor of politics is no more. Was he a dictator or a disciplinarian? Watu walikuwa wanasema Moi alikuwa dictator. Lakini hawakufahamu kwamba discipline si dictatorship. Si singeweza kuruhusu kila waziri kusema yake. Was he a hands-on leader or a control freak? The jury is still out, but friend and foe alike admit that Moi evoked fear, loyalty, love and hate in a potent mix that Professor Makao Mutua aptly captured in an article titled Why Former President Moi is a Political Genius that was penned for Saturday Nation published on 30th March 2013. He said, and I quote, The man is simply a political genius. That's because he has combined patronage and political wizardry in more potent combinations than any other Kenyan leader, dead or alive. Francis Gashuri Citizen TV